This video is sponsored by ArtGrid. The forest is a hypnotizing place. It's an inviting place, a beautiful place, an enchanting place, a mysterious place, an eerie place, a music place, a dark place, a scary place. It's easy to get lost in the moss and ferns and lose your way. The trees begin to blur together, signs seem to point you in circles, and the path ahead of you becomes unclear. Because for better or for worse, the forest is a hypnotizing place. That intro doesn't have much of anything to do with the meat of this video, but I figured with a vague editing tips tutorial, it's a little open-ended. So I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. In this video, I'm gonna be doing something we've done in the past and just throwing out a bunch of random tips for editing in Adobe Premiere Pro, from removing flicker from your lights to making Premiere run much faster, making your voice sound fuller in your audio. A lot of these are just one click away and can have a massive impact on the quality of your editing. And a lot of these you will probably already know, but hopefully there's a little something in here for everyone. That being said, let's go ahead and start at the beginning of the editing process and work our way all the way through to the final export. First, before you dive into your next project, check your project settings and make sure that Premiere is using your graphics card. If your computer has this option and you're not using it, Premiere is probably running way slower than it could be. Actually, just a few weeks ago, I was having a terrible time with Premiere and could not figure out for the life of me why it was having such a bad day editing this project. And then after an entire day of banging my head on my desk, trying to get it to run faster, I checked my project settings and it turns out that I didn't have it set to be using my graphics card for whatever reason. So I felt pretty dumb, but that is a very important thing to check. Next up, you can actually import sequences and footage from a different Premiere project really easily into your current project. Just hit Command I to open up the import window as if you're importing any other piece of footage into Premiere, then navigate to the project that you wanna fetch those assets from and open it. You'll have the option to import that entire project file or what I prefer to do is to select the specific sequences that you want to import. And then you'll see all of that footage and everything you'd previously done to it is now imported into your current project. I use this all the time, mostly to grab selects that I've already done from a previous project, or for this video, the intro that I tacked onto the beginning was something that I made a few weeks ago. So I imported it from that other project file into this one instead of having to render it out and then bring it back in. This is a much faster, more flexible option. Next up, make sure to use optical flow on your time remapped clips. So if you're using a speed ramp on your footage or changing the speed of a clip to something unusual, like say 127% speed, then you'll often get choppy footage on your timeline because Premiere is struggling to decide which frame to display because the speed of the clip and the frame rate it was shot in don't line up perfectly. By telling Premiere to use optical flow rather than picking a single frame to display, it'll basically go through and make its own fake frames to fill in the gaps. And that way you're not gonna have that weird choppy motion. I made another video actually showing how to do this in After Effects, but this is a much simpler, faster way to achieve pretty much the same result. So you can consider this kind of an amendment to that video. But if you wanna go back and watch the first half of that video, it has a much more in-depth kind of nerdy explanation of why this problem exists in the first place. So that could be of interest. It'll be linked right up here. Speaking of frame rates and speeds not lining up and causing issues, sometimes you'll take a video of like a screen or a light and get this awful, flicker in your footage. It's super distracting and looks terrible, but most of the time it's really easy to fix in post. All you need to do is duplicate your footage onto the track above it, offset it by one frame and drop the opacity to 50%. And then most of the time you'll notice that that flicker is completely gone. It's one of those effects that's almost just annoying when you find out just how easy it is to pull off and wonder how you've made it 
this far as an editor without knowing how to do this, but now you do. That being said, the next tip to improve your edits is to use stock footage and get it from ArtGrid. All jokes aside, whether you're adding an overlay over your own footage or filling in the gaps for a shot that you weren't able to capture yourself, there are a ton of situations where stock footage can come in completely clutch as a filmmaker and editor. ArtGrid is a massive library of amazing footage shot by filmmakers all over the world, with new material added daily as more and more filmmakers join the community. And unlike most stock footage libraries, ArtGrid's one license allows you to use any of their footage for any project. That license covers commercial use and your client's use of the footage, there are no limits on the number of views or the audience that you can share it with, and if you don't renew your subscription in the future, you can still use all the footage you downloaded. There are three different subscription plans based on the quality of footage that you need to download. So for just $25 a month, you can download all of their footage in HD. For $40 a month, you can download it in 4K and 8K. And for $50 a month, you can download it in 4K and 8K in log or even raw. Overall, I found stock footage to often feel very corny and corporate or even just low quality. But with ArtGrid, I found the footage to be very cinematic and gives you a lot of flexibility for working with it in post and tailoring it to your own project. So if you decide you wanna try it out for yourself, make sure to use the link in the description for your purchase and you'll be able to get the first two months of your subscription completely free. And through the end of this month, you'll be able to download a cool pack of like a bunch of visual effects elements like smoke and other overlays that go on top of your footage. Super useful stuff for editing your project. So peep that link in the description. That being said, let's go ahead and talk about Warp Stabilizer, which is of course very useful for stabilizing any shaky footage you may have, but it can also be used a little differently by changing it from smooth motion to no motion. This way the effect will completely stabilize your footage, which can be helpful for say, getting rid of shake from wind hitting the camera or stabilizing a jittery time lapse, or even taking a handheld shot and making it look like a tripod shot. Of course, this isn't something to add to every single one of your clips, but footage like this would be completely unusable if it wasn't for this one very simple technique. So it's a good one to have shelved away in the back of your brain editing toolkit. Seeing as we're on the topic of editing time lapses, let's talk about adding a motion blur back into your footage in post. This is great for time lapses and hyperlapses or for shots that have been sped up in post and then need more motion blur added to them to look realistic. My favorite method is to do this right in Premiere using the RSMB or Real Smart Motion Blur plugin. Depending on the software you're using, I think it's between maybe like 50 and $150, but I would say it's well worth it because it's something I use on at least half of the footage in my videos. But you can also crack that clip open in After Effects and use an effect called CC Force Motion Blur for a similar effect. And I guess while we're on the topic of things you can do with Premiere plugins, let's talk about denoising your low light footage. You can do this in After Effects, but the best tool hands down for denoising noisy footage is Neat Video. It's a plugin for Premiere or any other software you may be using. It's about $75, I believe, but it is the best $75 you will ever spend. This plugin is incredible. I have no idea how this plugin does what it does, and I'm honestly a little ashamed that it took me until just a few months ago to start using it. But no more plugins, let's talk about some more things you can do in Premiere without using any other software. First, repositioning your footage using the anchor point instead of the position. If you adjust the position of a clip and then adjust the scale, you'll notice that it can skew the clip because the anchor point is no longer in the center. But if you reposition the clip exactly the same but use the anchor point rather than the position, then you'll notice that the anchor point is still right in the middle of the frame and if you scale the clip up it'll zoom right to the middle rather than moving around to the edge of the frame and looking weird. And finally let's finish this video off with some sound and export tips starting out with adjusting the master volume of your project to make sure that your audio isn't peaking. If your audio is too loud in Premiere it's going to sound absolutely horrible once you export and compress it. So make sure to keep an eye on the audio meters while you're editing. And if you see your audio start to clip into the red area at the top, just go to your master volume and lower it a bit. That'll lower the volume of your entire project and make sure that you're not having that peaking 
anywhere throughout the timeline. This is something I end up having to do on pretty much any project because I mean, I toss a music track in there and I toss a voiceover in and I toss a bunch of sound design in and it just gets louder and louder and builds on top of itself. And eventually by the time I'm done, it is entirely too loud. And if you export that, it's gonna sound like a compressed, crackly, super loud mess. So make sure to lower that master volume before you export. Next, another sound design technique I use all the time is to use EQ to make your vocal audio sound fuller and just overall better. So for like a voiceover in a video or audio like this of me talking, if I take that EQ off, you can hear that it does not sound nearly as full and nice because I'm recording this on like my on-camera Rode Video Mic Pro down here. It's not the highest quality studio or like podcasting microphone. So unless I get, you know, super close to it, it's not gonna sound as good as it could. But there is a hell of a lot you can do to improve your vocal audio in post just by using this effect called parametric EQ. Just drag that onto your audio, open up this edit dialog and you'll have a bunch of options. I like to start out with the loudness maximizer preset and then just bring up the bass a bit to bring out some more fullness in those lower frequencies that the microphone is not gonna be capturing as much of. So we've made it all the way through the editing process and it's time to help you out a little bit with your exports by showing you how to quickly and easily batch export multiple sequences. So let's say I've color graded five different clips on my timeline and for whatever reason, I'd like to render them all out individually. All I need to do is make each of those clips into its own nested sequence, then select all of those nested sequences in the media bin, right click and hit export media. Then just go through and set all the different export settings like the bitrate and file format and click add to render queue and they'll be sent to media encoder where you can then select where those files are going to actually render to on your hard drive. Then just hit render and they'll all batch export at the same time. You'd be surprised just how useful this can actually be. Like I had a client project a few weeks ago where I made three short videos within the same project file and then I could easily render them all out to the same place at the same time. I use this a lot for my Instagram stories for exporting um, a long Instagram story in like 15 or 10 second segments so I can post them individually. Like all of the other techniques in this video, a good one to know that might be useful for you, might not, Maybe you already knew it, but hopefully you learned something new from this video because I have no more advice for you. And although that's all for this one, these kinds of videos do seem to be a hit with you all. So I'm hoping to make more of these very soon. Tips for better sound design, better color grading. Let me know what you wanna see and I'll try to make it happen. Once again, a big thank you to ArtGrid for sponsoring this video, helping to keep the lights on today. And I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something new. If you did, feel free to share your support by leaving a like on the video, sharing it with your friends, or even subscribing to my channel and following me on Instagram at Aiden Robbins. I've been posting more and more on Instagram and it's been great to grow a little community over there as well as here on YouTube. So don't miss out if you wanna drop a follow at Aiden Robbins for some pretty pictures. But that's all for now. Keep creating and I'll see you in the next one.